Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, I'm going to talk about six brands that were once huge, but are just a mere shadow of their formal selves. Now, you know, spoiler alert, some deserve it, some really deserve it, some don't. But of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Today, I'm wearing my Ming the only micro brand, even though I wouldn't consider this a micro brand anymore, it's an independent brand. Uh, the Ming with the blue dial, I love this one to death. And also, guys, don't forget to check out DelrayWatch.com. Bunch of new watches in stock. Everything from Speedmaster Reduced to a very cool limited edition Corum Bubble unworn box and papers. A rare Rolex Explorer 16550 with creamy patina amongst others, all at delraywatch.com, link in the description below. So yeah guys, I've got a list here of brands that for one reason or another, and that's why I'm gonna cover today, uh, are no longer as popular as they used to be. This list is in no particular order, but I think we gotta start with the most famous example, Frank Mueller. The master of complications. Jesus, what can we say about Frank Mueller? Powerhouse brand in the early 2000s to the mid 2000s. Famous uh, watchmaker Frank Mueller used to work for Patek Philippe, started his own brand. Famous for the Curvex cases, uh, kind of inspired by vintage Patek Philippe once again. Genuinely beautiful watches. I'm going to be honest with you guys, I think they're gorgeous. But when somebody slaps Master of Complication on the back of their watch and charges you 20 grand for a steal at a chronograph, I can't but say, help but say, good riddance, Frank Mueller. Jesus, these guys do not deserve to be a high-end watchmaker. Now, yeah, um, you know, they were very popular, as I said, in the early to mid-2000s. But, in a, you know, things started happening. The internet watch forums, communication, information started being more wildly available, and I think people realized that Frank Mueller was probably, even though really beautiful watches, one of the worst deals in the watch industry to date. Now the brand is uh, very hard to sell, pretty much heavily discounted, gray market dealers. The owners are sat there scratching their heads, you know, thinking what went wrong, well, you know, scamming your customers, well, not quite scamming, but, you know, the the 14,000% markups certainly didn't help. Um, and yeah, I don't think they're coming back anytime soon, and uh, eventually this brand is either going to get bought out or die. Honestly, if I didn't think they were so beautiful, which I do, um... I think this is one of the biggest jokes in watchmaking. Whew, that got me riled up. Second is Abel, a watch brand very famous in the early 90s all the way to the early 2000s, uh, particularly famous for their Wave bracelet. Now, Abel is a brand with some innovation. Yeah, they made quartz pieces, um, but they also used chronographs with the El Primero movement. They made their own movement in uh, their own chronograph mo movement called Le Modular, which, by the way, I do have in stock for a like fraction of the retail price. If you are interested, this is a case of basically stale designs. Uh, Abel kind of was one was really famous for their one design. They wrote it all the way to the end. The design fell out of fashion. They never changed, and the brand slowly eroded away to being a memory uh, in watch geeks' minds. Uh, I would say they are pretty high-quality watches, even though lately they've been making a lot of quartz stuff to try and piece together a few sales. But, uh, yeah, no. Uh, mainly purchased by older men and 90-year-old women that remember the heyday of Abel, even though they have made some pretty cool watches, and as I said, a, a, an in-house movement as well. Third, a brand that I'm known for liking, Panerai. I own three of them personally. What can I say? The early 2000s was Panerai mania. Panerai has and still had and still has their own forum, Paneristi. I mean, these guys were hotter than steel sports Rolex. Crazy collectors, uh, vintage Panerai, I mean, super hot. The market is down in the dumps. And I think what caused it is a couple of things. So first, you know, once again, uh, 
too much focus on limited editions, but that is not solely what killed them or Omega wouldn't exist either. I just think they got too expensive for what they were, which is ETA-based sports watches. However, then the in-house movement craze came in and Panerai started creating in-house movements. That's not bad, right? Well, actually, Paneristi never really cared about the movement. Panerai was all about the history, the design, and the ruggedness. So their in-house movements didn't really sell all that well because guess what? Nobody bought a Panerai for the movement. So now they have all their money invested in this. Market keeps tanking. Now what does Panerai do? Cost cutting. They get rid of screwed lugs. They get, get rid of thick spring bars. They now have snap-on case backs uh, instead of screw-down case backs. So they went from a utilitarian sports watch with history to an expensive utilitarian sports watch with history, to an in-house company that nobody bought, to now cutting a bunch of costs because nobody's still buying them. Total shame. Uh, I love you know uh, what the brand stood for. I'm Italian. I'm, I'm kind of proud of Panerai, but I'm going to be honest. Modern Panerai wouldn't even buy them at 50% off. Next, IWC. My favorite brand on this list, IWC, Richemont Group, along with Panerai. Uh, really going strong in the late 2000s, in the early, sorry, the late 90s, all the way to the late 2000s. But once again, the in-house boom happened and people stopped buying IWC. Yes, known for selling Valjoux 7750 movements for about eight nine thousand $9,000, which is very expensive. Still less than half the price of a Frank Mueller. So let's not even compare, uh, you know, those two. The IWC started making in-house movements uh, a little late to the game, and now it seems they're picking back up again, but when I look at their collection, it's completely bloated. I mean, how many freaking versions of the Pilot's Watch do you need? There must be 20 or 30 of them on their website. I think they're just confusing their customers at this point. However, unlike Abel Frank Mueller, I think IWC has a better chance of recovering um, even better than Panerai. Now a brand that is so dead that I don't think anybody knows it exists. That is Concord. Uh, very similar to a bell. Very small quartz watches. Uh, also some automatic stuff. Very popular in the mid-90s. Um, yeah, I, I don't even know what happened to them. I just think they, they just stopped making things people bought. I don't think their designs got updated. They never really made an in-house movement. When they updated their look with the Concord C1, which I actually have in stock for about 10 cents on the dollar at dollaraywatch.com, when they finally updated their look and they made a cool looking watch, I think it was 10 years too late and nobody knew what Concord was anymore. Last but not least, one of the modern brands that I think is in the biggest amount of pain out there, probably in bigger pain than Frank Mueller, that is Baum & Mercier. Once again, a Richemont brand. Uh, this one pains me because I, I really do like Bowman Mercier. I think they make nice watches. I can't really figure this one out. I think they make handsome watches. I think they're well-made. They just released their first in-house movement, which Bowman Mercier was never about in-house movements. It was supposed to be entry-level luxury. But I think unlike Longines, which had great history, Bowman Mercier was always kind of entry-level. So they don't really have a history to piggyback off of. Then on top of that, uh, you know, I think what really happened is, is their prices got too high. When Bowman Mercier starts charging three to $4,000 for a chronograph, and for that price you can get entry-level IWC, uh, or maybe a Panerai Luminor back in the day, people didn't think there was a reason to buy Bowman Mercier. And now, uh, with their decline, you can find them for 70 to 80% off all over the internet. They've been coming out with beautiful designs year after year, hoping to kind of figure one out, releasing the Clifton, the Capelin, now the Balmatic, but nothing seems to be working, and they keep slipping further and further into their hole, which, as I said, is a shame, because for an Etta-based brand, I think they make beautiful timepieces. Um, so yeah, this is one I'd really like to see come back, but probably the second most dead brand on this list after uh, Concord, which I actually think may be bankrupt. I'm not entirely sure about that. But yeah, I think Frank Mueller and uh, Panerai deserve what they got. I think Bell got a little bit unlucky. I think Bob and Mercier got greedy. No one knows what happened to Concord, and IWC was just a little late to the game.
Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'd love to hear it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really does help. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more content. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.